Good afternoon. You're listening to My Conscious Dad on your hometown station, AM 1220, KHTS. I'm your host, Jasmine Urbina, here in the studio with my dad, Alex Urbina. As promised last week, we are going to be talking about role models, what it looks like to be a role model, what it means to be a role model, and what kind of role model you might be. Because whether we know it or not, everyone's kind of a role model in their own way, especially parents. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I just want to point that out and re- kind of reiterate that, that you're a role model whether you like it or not. You're... Uh, living your life by example, uh, your kids are watching you and deciding who they want to be as a future mom and dad, you know, by following what the way you're showing up in the world. And so whether you're doing it consciously or unconsciously, you're still making an effect on your kids. You're either empowering them or disempowering them. You could be disappointing them, or you can be, you know, somebody that they look up to and admire. And so, I think you know it's important as a parent to realize that uh, these little eyes are watching every move you make. They're actually probably a, a better expert at you than you are to yourself because you don't get to see yourself. You're not self-reflective to a high level, so you don't really, uh, you're not checking in with yourself before you make certain decisions and asking yourself, hey, is this beneficial to my growth? Is this beneficial to, to the uh, growth of my kids? Is this the kind of legacy that I want to be remembered by? All those kinds of things. But your kids are watching every move you make and they're learning from you. They probably learn more from the way that you show up and the decisions you're making and the results you're creating rather than the words that you're saying to them, rather than the advice that you're giving to your kids. Right, because you can tell me not to do something as your kid, you want the best for me. But if I see you doing it, all of a sudden it's hypocritical and I think it's okay because you've basically given me permission to do whatever you told me not to do. Yeah, we're not really giving you permission, but you're as a as the child perspective and you're looking at them, you're you're making an assumption that well, it must be okay if dad's doing it. Right? It must be okay that, you know, I can do this. Um, and then the, the, the last thing that you want to get as a parent is when your children are 16 or 17 years old and you're sitting down in a deep, meaningful conversation and you're getting your kids to look at how a behavior or a certain uh, way that they're choosing to live life isn't supporting them or it's not healthy for them, the last thing you want is for them to look at you and go, well, you're doing it or you did it. And, uh, you know, I mean, that's that's something that you don't want, you know, as a parent to have to to address. But, you know, we as parents, we make mistakes. Right. And we're in our own learning process and we're in our own journey. Hopefully you can have, you know, realized that that wasn't beneficial for you or for for the model that you're going to, uh, or the legacy you're going to leave for your kids. And so you made some of those kinds of adjustments. Right. So I went online and I found an article called the top five qualities of role models. And it was basically compiled of a bunch of students, high school, uh, middle school, high school and college students and adults. And they kind of all decided that these were the five qualities of role models from both perspective, adults and the youth. So I'm going to go ahead and read some of them and you can maybe break it down for us a little bit. Awesome. Sounds good. So the first one is passion and ability to inspire. Yeah. Is that the high, is that, are you starting with the top? I'm starting with the top. (laughs) Okay. Um, And to have passion and the ability to inspire people means that you would have to really uh, be at a high level of consciousness. You have to have worked through a lot of your major dysfunctions. Um, You have to work on a lot of your fears and insecurities and doubts and and really kind of surrender a lot of that. And you also have to work through your past. You got to really kind of be healed from your past. You can't have a lot of resentment and anger and all that kind of stuff that's bottled in that that really kind of holds you down. You got to be living a life of freedom, really, like emotional freedom so that and so that that frees you up to be able to figure out how to inspire other people so that you can you know inspire them one with your words and two with your actions like we're talking about in a, as a role model you have to kind of walk the walk you can't just talk the talk it's got to be a little bit of both you don't got to be perfect but you got to be you got to be in the journey you have to be you know working it out you got to be living it like a champion you got to be digging deep you got to be you know going for it Right. For me, the word role model, especially if we're talking about parents, no doubt the first thing I think of is being the example, as an example. And I think if you're passionate about something, you're setting an example for your kids 
and those two things, passion and ability to expire, they inspire, they kind of go hand in hand because if you're passionate that you don't even have to do anything else. You're already inspiring somebody. Hopefully you might be inspiring, you know, a small selective few of people. But if you're, you know, passionately out there chasing, you know, your dreams and going for your goals and, and really digging down deep and living a life of fulfillment and joy and, and being a big contribution to the world, you're probably going to be inspiring a bigger group of people. And so it's really a matter of how, how, how much of an inspiration can you be is really the question. But when you get to the role model or the highest level, that's where you're, you're living a life of freedom and passion. And that is inspiring, especially to young kids, because they're still trying to figure out who they are. They still are struggling with you know, the fears of this big, bad, scary world that's going to stomp on me and you know, uh, chew me up and spit me out. Like There's, a, there's all these uh, negative connotations and, and beliefs about the world or about themselves that they don't realize how amazing they are. So to, to watch your mom and dad really kind of challenge themselves and take on these projects that don't seem possible and overcome and, and watch them go through that journey, that's inspiring. I, I mean, to me, if I took myself back to my childhood, if I had parents that were just like going for it and, and rigorously, you know, getting beat up by life and picking themselves back up and then overcoming and, and you know, living the life of their dreams, I would be inspired. And, and I don't know how you feel, but that, that would inspire me to want to wanna kind of live that life. Same, exactly. And I think there might also be ways that people can inspire others negatively. So if you're not inspiring your kids in a positive way, they might be looking for inspiration somewhere else and they could get negative inspiration. That's a great point. Actually, uh, I'm going to switch out the word inspira inspiration with ins uh, influence. Influence. Right. They're being influenced by other people's agendas. You know, a lot of egotistical games that, you know, people play to try to look good or be macho or be the cool one. They, if, they, if there's a group of kids that are running around in the streets kind of operating from that place, that might look attractive to your son or daughter that is looking for something. They want to be a part of something bigger than themselves. And if you're not it, if you haven't decided to go out there and be that that you know character for them, they're going to go seek it somewhere else. If not, they're not doing it with their friends. They're looking on TV and watching, you know, um, these families with that with their name starts with a K, <laughs> and and they're they're you know kind of following their footsteps and mimicking those people, and those become the role models. And you don't want that as a parent. You want to be that major powerful influence, and you want them to kind of pick up the words you're using, and they want you want them to to pick up some of those great qualities and those attributes that you're, you've developed and that you're showing them that. I love that you pointed that out. So if you're listening and you're a parent and you think that you're not able to inspire your kid, just know that somebody else is going to. Absolutely. And I don't want you to think like you have to do something really big to inspire them. Pick something small. You know, just pick a, you know, um, hey, you know, this is, if you're sharing that with your kids, hey, this is a, a big deal for me. You know, I want to go start, you know, doing some Zumba class and I'm really afraid or my fear is really coming up for me or I want to start eating healthier. You know, start with something small and then let your kids know that it's a big deal for you and then, and then let them watch you in that challenge and over overcoming that and you start with little things and you work up to big things don't get overwhelmed like oh my god because i haven't done it you know don't get don't disempower yourself just decide today i'm going to start to live that kind of a life i'm going to start to maybe i'm going to start to inspire myself right and you know what <laughs> um at the women's workshop that you did i think a couple weeks ago you had mentioned something that really sat with me that i really loved um you said don't take on too much at a time you do everything step by step because then you get overwhelmed with the whole idea like I think the example you gave was working out if you think every day oh my gosh I have to go work out every day that's really overwhelming and it makes you want to give up but if you take it day by day you wake up in the morning I'm gonna work out today I'm gonna work out today you know you you like I said take it day by day it's so much easier than overwhelming yourself with the big goal which is how oh, I have to inspire my kids you know if you just learn how to live day by day or or learn how to live in the moment is where that's where the real peace comes from you know even with some of my clients that have uh, they struggle with the fear of relationships like thinking of having a relationship and maintaining a relationship and they kind of get overwhelmed like oh my god it's so much if they just focused on just focus on being in the relationship right now in this moment 
don't worry about tonight or tomorrow or six months or if you're ever going to get you know asked to be married or proposed to in a year none of that exists tomorrow doesn't exist the future doesn't exist the only thing that keeps showing up is this new moment of now so be here now do you feel like working out now no Later on, at a different moment of now, do you feel like working out? Yes. Okay, great. Then work out at that moment of now. You're just going to keep making declarations, you know, and put it in your calendar. You're going to work out or whatever that goal is. And then be, be focused on that moment. Don't be focused on 10, 20, 50 moments down the road that might not even show up. That's where people get so overwhelmed and so stressed out. Sounds great. So number two of the top five qualities of role models is people who have clear sets of values. Well, first of all, people that, that are crystal clear about what their values are and they can rattle them off to you, you know, right off the top of their head, um, you know, compassion, honesty, integrity, uh, uh, perseverance, you know, if they already have these five pillars or three pillars that they know that they want to model themselves after or live their life like that, those people are crystal clear about it, and so it ha that, that clarity helps them every day decide how they're going to choose certain things in their life. So they're not, you know, when, when they have a certain scenario that comes up in their life, and they, they look at their morals and their values and the, the pillars at which they want to live their life, then they get clear about what kinds of decisions to make. A lot of times when people are confused, like, I don't know what to choose. A lot of times I'll tell them, well, what, let's go back to your morals and your values and some of the principles that you want to live your life by. And then a lot of times they'll say, well, I never really figured that out. Okay, great. It's a perfect time to figure it out. And I help them get clear about how do you want to live your life today in this moment moving forward. And once you do that assessment and you know what they are and you've written them out and you put them up on your wall and it becomes like a plaque, you know, you, you should have a plaque in your wall that says, you know, the Urbina family morals. This is, or these are the five, you know, or ten uh, distinctions at which we're going to live our life as a family. Those things is what you should should be guiding you on the decisions you're making so that you're moving forward. And that's no different. That's, you know, you're parenting by a certain set of standards and morals. Some people use spiritual standards. Some people use universal standards. It's it's It helps you get clear about where you're going. You're not going to take off on a road trip and not know where you're going, even though that might be pretty <laughs> interesting, right? But, you know, if you're, if you're going to New York, you don't want to get a map that shows you the exact directions how to get to New York. You're not just going to say, hey, let's just jump in the car and we'll figure it out on the way. You know, for me growing up, a lot of, there was a lot of values that you instilled in me, my brother, my sister. Um, but the one that always stood out to me and was very important to me is integrity. And I think it's because you would always stress how important it was to be your word. Like if you say you're going to do something, you do it because you made that declaration already and you are now held to that so as far as parents being role models when i think of what should i do if i'm in those moments like oh what should i do i can't make it to this party that i said i was going to go to or you know this event i think you know what would my dad do you know you think of what your role models would do and i know that you would go because you said you would go even if you didn't want to go even if you were tired or whatever you would go because you had already declared that you were going to go. And I think that's probably how the values are really important for role models to know that those values are what your kids are doing. And one of the reasons why I would go, regardless if I felt like going or not, is because a long time ago I decided that I wasn't going to be run by my feelings. When I started learning dis different distinctions about leadership, one of the big distinctions that really popped up for me was this quote that I read, and it, I don't know who, who said it, but it just really stuck with me, and it was that leaders aren't run by their feelings. They're run by their commitments. And so if I make a commitment, I'm driven by my commitment. I'm purpose-driven. I'm not driven by my feelings. Because if I was ran by my feelings, I would get nothing done. Because inherently, I don't want to do anything. You know, inherently, we're lazy. We don't. We want the easy way out. So I don't. I don't rely on my feelings to move me. I don't rely on my feelings to decide whether I'm going to do something or not. I go based on what I'm committed to, and I let my commitment compel me to say, "Well, I gave my word. I made that commitment. I get to go because my word is gold. My word is bond." And then, a, then a wise man uh, when I was younger, in my 20s, one of my mentors, he broke it down for me and said, "If you ha if you don't have your word." If your word's nothing, then you have nothing. 
because you know money can go and and you know all the the financial things and the goodies the houses the homes you know all those tangible things can be gone but one thing that you do have control over is your word and if your word is gold then your gold and it just that just stuck with me when i was a kid and i and i wanted to live my life by that and so it's been something i've been practicing and am i perfect at it absolutely not but it's something that that you know means a lot to me I've, I've decided that's important to me so i i choose that as much as i can every day and and hopefully that by being that example it's rubbed off on you and based on you sharing that with me that makes me feel good that it, you picked that up you know one of the downfalls i was just thinking as you're sharing that is because that's something that's very important to me and I sometimes see in my friends or in other people that it's not that important to them. And it kind of gets me frustrated sometimes, which I know it has nothing to do with me and it's all about my control, but it gets me frustrated that it's so important to me. And I think it's such, um, you know, a great value to have and other people don't have it that I just feel so almost offended when, let's say somebody bails on me and I say, I would never do that to that person, but that's because that's so important to me. So I think that's like a little bit of a downfall for me is that I, I hold it at such a high standard. Like I think that's such a great value to have. And when people don't have it, I don't, I don't necessarily think less of them, but I but it's in the back of my mind that they aren't that way. Yeah. You need to have more compassion for people and realize that everyone's on their own journey and uh, it just, they don't either see the value or they've never been taught that or it just hasn't clicked for them. And it's just, that's where they're at. And Yeah, and gotta, I, don't, I don't, I now know, and it took me a while to get here, but I now know that it's not wrong, that they just have different sets of values, that just because that's my number one value doesn't mean it has to be theirs. Yeah, I know. And and you're you're such a loving and caring and compassionate person that you want people to win. And I think it really gets you when you see people, they, you know their potential. You know they can choose that also, but they're just choosing not to look at it. They, you know, Even when you're putting it right in their face or you're having a conversation with, about it, and they're like, yeah, yeah, and they brush it off, I can see you already getting like, oh, can't you see this? Because you want people to win so bad. That's what I love most about you is that you want people to win, you want people to get it. The problem is you can't force people to get it. You can only talk about it, open up possibilities, paint the picture, invite people. You can just be an invitation like we're doing today. We're talking about you know different distinctions. We're talking about our own growth. We're being an invitation to invite people to say, hey, you know what? I like that. Or I want some of that. Or I want a piece of that. Or I want to live my life some similar to that. Just so we can inspire people to start their own journey. Um, earlier you were talking about, you know, when you make a commitment and you get to keep your word to it. There's a lot of times that I can't keep my word to some of my commitments. And one of the things that really breaks my heart um, is, you know, a couple of times in the past, the past five or 10 years, I know there was a couple of birthdays of yours that I missed that I would, I would give my, my left arm to have been at your birthday party. And, uh, I had made commitments for, um, some other trainings that I did that were on my calendar and I misbooked them or whatever. And I remember thinking to myself, all right, what do I do here? And so, I, I chose to believe that you were big enough to be able to see that there's a possibility that I can enroll you into negotiation. If I can negotiate to create still a win-win. If I can get you to see that, hey, me not being there on that day is not a lose. That when I get back, that I'll serve it up 10 times and I'll, and I'll make it I'll make it up to you 10 times. And uh, and I don't know if I could have done that with any of my other kids. But you, for some reason, you're you're such a champion and a warrior. I just knew that that I was, you know. And before, before saying that, I was willing to give up those workshops. I was willing to surrender that um, so that I can be there for you if it was that important. And I remember asking you that. It, it, the look in your eye was like, it was like almost like, no. <laughs> but, but, but when you looked at me and you said, you know what, Dad, go do what you do, I, it just, man, it made me feel really good to know that I have a daughter that supports what I do, believes in what I do, and the difference that, that I can make in the contribution, and that I know I got a lifelong partner in supporting me, and that you were even gracious enough to, to take one for the team when it came down to, to me not being there for your birthday. Thank you. That means a lot. We'll be right back. Stay tuned for more of My Conscious Dad right here in your hometown station, AM 1220 KHTS.